grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. Last week in these videos, we looked at the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. One of three parables toward the end of Matthew's Gospel, which focus on the theme of faithful waiting. This week, we're exploring another of those parables, the parable of the talents or the parable of the three servants. Let's continue our worship now as we come into a time of prayer. Take some time now just to, to still yourselves. Be conscious that uh, the Spirit of God is with you and enter into a time of prayer. Let's pray. Awesome God, you created the universe and all that is in it. You blessed each element of creation with your love. And you call us to live fully, to live the way of Jesus, to live lives of witness and service. Assure us of your ongoing presence. Clear our minds and souls of all the distractions which draw us away from you. Open our hearts and spirits and let your healing and empowering love flow in. Prepare us to be witnesses to your power and love as we use the gifts with which you have blessed us in your service. And we offer this prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The parable of Jesus from Matthew 24, verses 14 to 30 concerning three servants. This version of the parable is from the New Living Translation. This translation refers to each servant receiving bags of silver. The actual Greek text refers not to bags, but talents. A talent is a huge amount of money. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give them an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. 
To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Last week in these videos, we looked at the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. And I mentioned in that video that it contained elements, that parable, that were a little difficult for us to interpret. I think the same could be said of today's passage. So easily we can find ourselves struggling with our feelings about the servant with the one talent. We can struggle too with his uh, picture of the master, which wasn't a, a glowing one, was it? And then we can struggle too with the demise, the ending of the, of the poor servant with the one talent. But I think the whole point of this parable is actually not so much to focus on him, but on the other two servants. The master trusts all three of them with an enormous amount of money. One talent was the equivalent of 6,000 denarii. A denarii was one day's work, pay for one day's work. So therefore, by my calculation, 6,000 denarii could be something in the order of a million dollars. A huge amount of money. Now, the two servants who are commended by the master do not hold the gift that they're given tightly. They don't, they don't bury it somewhere, but they use it in the best sense of the word use. They risk the gift, the gifts, and they show great creativity in using the gifts. And at the end, they receive a blessing of joy for what they have done. And notice, there's a surprise ending in this parable. It's not just about the, 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 the servant being left out in, in the cold, but the other two servants are given the money that they have been lent by the, uh, by the master. Indeed, the one who has, in the end, ten talents is given the one talent that was given to the third servant. So how does this story impinge on us and our lives? Well, first of all, surely the parable reminds us that we're blessed in so many ways by God with the wonder of life. The fact that we draw breath each day, surely that is a blessing that we should be thankful for. With the amazing gift of creation, of which we are a part, just, just stop and look at the world around you with the joy and love and forgiveness that God brings through Jesus, with a whole variety of gifts and talents that each of us is blessed with. And you can add to the list when you start to think about the many things that we're blessed with, the many gifts that we have in our lives. Secondly, the parable challenges us not to hide things away, not to hold things tightly like they're just for us, not to bury them somewhere, but to risk using what we have to reach out to others, to risk sharing the good news in word and deed, to risk doing our bit to make a small patch of this world look a little bit more like the vision God has for the kingdom of God, to risk living the way of Jesus, the way of the kingdom, to live. That's what the parable challenges us to do, to give thanks for what we have and to live. Let me present two quick parables or examples uh, that are modern day. One is a little bit silly, but I think it makes the point. Some months ago, I was in a nursery and there was a pile of seed packets of outdated seeds. And I picked up the one that said uh, sweet peas. And because as a child I had grown sweet peas in the garden, I thought, yeah, I'd like to do that again. So I took the sweet peas home. I didn't throw them away. They were a gift to me, but I didn't throw them away. I planted them in the back garden. And now they've grown to an enormous height, nearly well over two metres. And they're blossoming. And they're offering an amazing display of colour and scent. Now the seeds were a gift. I risked planting them, and now they are so full of life. Now a second example, a little less silly than the first. 
And this is a true story, but I've changed a few things to de-identify the people involved. A minister was aware that there was a young person in hospital and not doing so well. And that minister had been beaming all day to pop up to the hospital and visit the person. But they hadn't got round to do it because other things had happened, as they do. At tea time, this minister felt that she should do something, that even though it was late, and even though it might be a complete waste of her time, and it, in a sense wasn't that rational, she was going to pop up to the hospital at that late hour and see how that young person was going, half expecting to find that young person asleep and no, no member of the family present. When the minister arrived, she found the family was there. There was lots of members of the family there and the young person was clearly having some sort of medical crisis. So she sat and talked with the family for a while. Mainly, of course, she simply listened. She offered a short prayer and then she headed home quietly. The young person pulled through. But years later, the family still remember what that minister did for them. That she was there. That she was there. And she had reminded them that God was with them on that terrible night. Now, as I said, that minister could have rationally thought, look, I'm not going to waste my time this evening. I'll go in the next day. All will be well. But by risking the trip, she was able to share something of the life and healing love of God. Sisters and brothers, don't hold all your gifts too tightly. Don't bury your life. Risk living joyfully. Risk living joyfully for others. Risk sharing the blessings of the grace of God. Live your life fully. This is a prayer of thanksgiving and intercession based on a prayer by Richard J. Fairchild. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for the wonder of your intricate creation, for the incredible variety of creatures and flora, great and small, for our very life and breath, and for the gifts of your word, your power and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider all that you are and how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you would want us to live. Help us to be good stewards of your creation, cherishing and protecting its amazing diversity. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Make us ones who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray, O oh God, that each of us may keep discovering and developing and using the gifts with which we are blessed. Help us to recognise that we all have something to offer. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit. For those who are oppressed and heavily laden. For those who are sick or in despair those who mourn. Minister, O oh God, by your Spirit to those for whom we have prayed and help us to see how we can be an answer to our prayers. Help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
ای پدر آسمانی ما نام تو مقدس باد پادشاهی تو بیاید اراده تو همانطور که در آسمان اجرا می شود در زمین نیز اجرا شود نان روزانه ما را امروز به ما بده خطاهای ما را ببخش چنان که ما نیز خطاکاران خود را می بخشیم ما را در وسوسه ها می آورد بلکه ما را از شریر رهایی ده زیرا پادشاهی و قدرت و جلال تا عبد الاباد از آن توست آمین In the light of the parable, let's just spend a moment now toward the end of this time uh, of worship, committing ourselves to the way of God. Thank you, Lord, for all the gifts you entrusted to us. Help us to always remember that all we have comes from you and can be joyfully used for your good purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And here again the words Sir Archbishop Desmond Tutu that I, last, that I used last week. Wonderful words of, um, of hope and joy and living. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loves us. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.